oh, I'm going to go to nursing school so I can drive me a Benz. Guess again. Let me go ahead and bust that bubble, baby. Hey guys, it's your girl Officially Trinity and welcome back to another video on my Officially Dope Life of Tea channel. As you all can see from the title, this video will be about 10 misconceptions or things that I wish I would have been told prior to becoming a registered nurse. This year is 2024 and I have been a registered nurse for 10 years. So what prompted me to really make this video was Scrolling on social media and seeing all of the memes and funny clips about people saying, oh, I'm ready to go to nursing school so that I can um, look this way, buy a big mansion, do all of the things. And baby, uh-uh. I'm just finna I'm coming to tell you now, it that's not it. It's, it's, believe it. Trust your girl. That's not it. So one of the first and most common misconceptions or ideals by nurses is oh i'm gonna go to nursing school so i can drive me a benz guess again let me go ahead and bust that bubble baby because driving a benz unrealistic very much unrealistic well it's not unrealistic it can happen it can be very much achieved but you're going to take yourself from the tax bracket that you're trying to achieve and knock yourself back down a couple notches because truthfully when i first became a nurse in my area i'm in florida the starting salary for a first year RN was about $20. You heard right, it was $20 an hour. As a CNA, I was banking like $25 an hour and that's not an exaggeration. So I for sure took a pay cut. I had to do a lot of wheeling and dealing to get myself in a place where I was actually making a little bit of money. Don't go out and get a, a luxury car when you first graduate school, trust me. And if you took student loans, trust me do not go out and get a luxury car or you're gonna not enjoy the little bump in your pay you're, you're not you're not even gonna feel it the next common misconception is that you're gonna have financial freedom it kind of piggybacks on the last one that is not so because of the competitiveness in the field now it's really you really have to market yourself you really have to sell yourself to get you the best wage possible they're not going to care about what your GPA was in school. Sorry for those of you who overachieved, like me. It, it does not matter. They're not going to care. That What they're really going to care about is your attitude, uh, your flexibility, and your availability. Those are going to be the major selling points. Um, everything else is just fluff. No matter what you know, they're going to teach you on the job. So don't go thinking that you have to be a, a Hill Scholar or, or, or something. Like, you... It, Trust me, they're going to teach you what you need to know. Number three. So number one is the misconception. You're going to be driving a luxury car, living a, you know, flashy life. Uh-uh, not true. No, ma'am. Or sir, because there are male nurses. Number two, that you're just going to have financial freedom. No. <laughs> no, let's bring those expectations down just to, just a tad bit. And number three is that the job is going to be easy. It is not easy. It is not easy by far. Maybe this job comes with a lot of emotional damage, lots. Especially if you really got into nursing for the care of people. Like I honestly do care about people. And being a CNA, I was a CNA for about three years. It really showed me that a lot of nurses aren't in it for the actual care of human beings. Like they're in it because of the, probably the first two. And no, they I'm sure they quickly realized which made them jaded and very evil for lack of a better word right now. And I, no, you becoming a nurse, you're going to have a lot of emotional damage because the reality is that it's a business. Healthcare is a business, especially in our country. So. You're going to be front and center for like the difference that the business side does make in the healthcare side. Number four, um, one of the things that I wish that I was told prior or that is, it wouldn't really be a misconception, but something that I probably wish I was told is that you can go on that job being the baddest bitch ever. Uh-uh. Not true. You got to check that ego at the door. 
Um, becoming a nurse and becoming licensed, you really, 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 it's driven into you, especially in nursing school, if you have good preceptors, good instructors, that a lot of times you're gonna have to be the bigger person. When you go out into society, you're gonna have to take that L. Whichever way it goes for y'all. You're gonna have to take that L because you can lose your license from getting into altercations off the job. Yes. Public intoxication? Yes. There are many, 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 many reasons that you can lose your license. So a lot of it, you're gonna have to check at the door. All that arguing back and forth and bickering, you're gonna have to choose a lot of times to be the bigger person. So you're gonna have to mature a lot. So if you're preparing to go into nursing school and you are you might be a little bit hot-headed, you might wanna think about it. You just, just might wanna think about it. Check that ego, talk to your therapist, get it together. Yeah, save yourself some money and heartache. Number five um, tip, misconception, something I wish someone would have told me is you're going to have to learn how to be compassionate. It may sound like common sense, but it, it's not common sense. You have to be compassionate. And a lot of times you have to give compassion to those who may not be the most nice. Um, yeah, they're not nice. I'm a millennial and a lot of the majority of my patients are boomers or older. And yeah, they're, they can be very crass. Very, very crass. Their generation was very not like ours. Like, we'll, we, we will check it. If there's something going on with you, we'll, we will have a come to Jesus meeting. But, um, or a come, come to the Savior meeting. But um, those other generations, a lot of times when they look at you, the things that your grandma says in privacy of her home or at family the functions that make you cringe, Granny's going to say that in the hospital. <laughs> Papa is going to say that to the nurse in the hospital. And it, 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 mm, mm. thankfully, I have a very loving heart and I don't take nothing. I don't, honey, I'm here to care for you. Regardless of what you say and how you feel, I'm here to give you the best care possible. So yes, something that you're going to have to prepare yourself for is the attitudes of the patients. You're going to have to get that compassion, that compassion cup and pour into it let it overflow because a lot of times you're going to have days that are going to make you question why did i do this to myself because the money ain't money in the glam ain't glamoring like what what's up number six a common misconception with nursing is that you're going to be aesthetically cute like yes i do i do <laughs> i do yes i am subscribed to the the cutesy things I do have my bog bags. I do have my Stanley cups. I do have my cute lanyards. I have all of the things, the cute scrubs, which I can't really wear because I have to wear a uniform at my job. However, I do have all of the things, all of the pens, all of the books. Yes, the stethoscope. Oh, it's so cute. But poo, it comes with boo boo. Being a nurse, you're gonna have to wipe some butt. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what where people get this from that they're not going to have to a, a cna or somebody else is going to have to do that no love being a good nurse is understanding that the care of the entire patient belongs to you whether there's a cna available whether there's a p uh what do they call them patient care tech available or not it lands on you i'm a nurse i enjoy a clean patient a clean patient is a happy patient a happy patient makes a sweet shift trust me so don't go into nursing if you're now CNA thinking that, oh, I'm not going to have to work no blood. I'm not going to have to clean or slobber. I'm not going to have to do nothing. That's not true. You're going to have to do all of that. <laughs> Plus some. And that's okay. Because again, we are compassionate people. We have the understanding that we're caring for a human life. Like they're more than just flesh. Like we're caring for them wholly. So take that into account. Another thing that I wish was told to me prior to becoming a nurse is that the hate is real the hate is real and that's amongst the other nurses on the floor people out in the real world people in nursing school the hate is gonna hate trust me people who are not who people who perceive themselves or who have that internalized um imposter syndrome like they may be nurses themselves 
but they're just not feeling it. And you being a girl or a boy who feels it, you know that your tea, you know that this is your calling, you know that God has called you to this thing or that this is your path, you know you're going to get there, they're going to hate on you. So keep your eyes and ears open. Don't become friends with everybody who smiles on your face and offers you help. Because sometimes they're offering you a help down into a pit. <laughs> they may be digging to get you in some mess. So be very mindful. Very, very, very much mindful of that. So yes, the hate is real. Very real. Number seven, which piggybacks off of number six, you have to learn how to advocate for yourself. Like you have to speak up for yourself. If you are a person who commonly, prior to becoming a nurse, would show up to jobs in class late, you gotta get rid of that. Becoming a nurse, you need to show up early so that you can get a glimpse of your job assignment. Check that patient acuity. Don't just let them, because you may be the new nurse on the floor, don't let them just pile any patient and anything on you. You have to know your stuff. You don't have to be the most knowledgeable. Knowledgeable? Knowledgeable. Why is that word tripping me up? You don't have to know everything, but you gotta know your stuff. Go in, check that patient acuity, it, walk the halls, take a look, look and see what tubes, how much, how many IV bags are hanging from the patient's room. You don't have to go inside, but you know, be mindful. Look, advocate for yourself. Um, advocate so that you don't, you're not the nurse that's always getting a new admission or the nurse that's always discharging your whole team. Ask your, speak to your charge nurse. Let them share, like split up that wealth between everybody. Like it's a team effort. And nurses, a lot of times we get burnt out because we don't advocate for ourselves. So if there's something that I wish someone would have told me early is to learn to advocate for yourself. You got, you have to grow a backbone. You cannot be a people pleaser all the time. Yeah, you want your patients to be happy. You want to make a, a happy healing environment for your patients, but you have to advocate for yourself. Also, don't let the patient's family or the patient just uh, verbally abuse you. You have your rights as well as a nurse. And vice versa, you can't be mean. You can't be a mean girl. We may wear pink on Wednesdays, but not in not in the hospital and, and in the doctor's office and, and in the places where we have to be professional. Yeah, so learn to advocate for yourself. Next point, I think it's number eight that I wish that people would have told me, the other nurses and things would have told me prior to becoming a nurse is, if you think you about to be slim and trim and getting all of the men, uh-uh. They eat out a lot. Oh my goodness, since becoming a nurse, I've never met so many people who are going to DoorDash, Uber Eats, uh, order carry out, get together, go and pick up food, and I mean binge eat over and over and over again. The job is very stressful. It is, it can become stressful, um, and you can become overwhelmed, but do not, baby, pack your lunch. Pack you a lot of snacks. <laughs> because if you wanna stay slim, trim, and cute, and not have to try to beat down, you already got on that, that, that nursing school pounds. Cause I, me personally, I gained 27 pounds through nursing school, 27. 27 and that's because of one i had wine a lot and i had a lot of to lend, well ice cream gelato whatever i had it the things that were to have i had it so you know the weight piled on and if you want to get back into that groove get your water get your snacks not cookies and cakes and stuff but you know like healthy snacks so that you because you're going to get the munches like you're going to because you're moving so much you're on your feet a lot, you're going to get hungry. Try to fight that ordering out monster. Do not do it. Because it, it may be a bonding thing for people. Like amongst nurses, people on the, the unit. Wave that white flag. Don't, don't do it. Trust me. I wish they would have told me that, yes, it's nice to bond with your fellow nurses, but you're going to be, you're, you're going to be getting bigger scrubs. Save yourself. Somebody, I wish somebody would have saved me. And the last point, which I don't even know why I count it because I lost track of count. I lost track of count, which is why nurses keep notes. I, don't, I write everything down. I have to have a short notes for everything, which I do have notes, but you know, they were kind of sloppily written. Anyways, my last point is becoming a nurse was the best decision that I ever made in my life. No, I don't have the most financial freedom. Well, actually, let me, since becoming tenured, this year is my 10th year, 
I finally am at the top of the, the salary bracket. So the girl getting a little piece of coin. I am. I'm getting a little piece of coin and I'm very appreciative. And as soon as I start getting a little piece of coin, what do I do? <laughs> Go to grad school. Money gone. Flushed. But, you know, it gets tight for a little bit and before it gets right. Because when I graduate, I'm back in the money. But yes, becoming a nurse is the best decision that I could have ever made. Um, although I am not, I do drive a luxury car. So, yeah. But that took time. I didn't get that right away. I, I had a Honda when I first graduated nursing school. Yes, I did. I, I did buy it when I graduated nursing school. But that's because the car that I was going to school with was on its last leg. But becoming a nurse, it really has helped me to, you know, bring life to have a, a better look at life. Like, I really am appreciative for everything, for the smallest things. We are there as nurses with people at their lowest a lot of times. So a lot of times we cry with our patients and their family. We have to give them an encouraging word. And it has helped me tremendously. Um, I love what I do. I wouldn't trade it for the world. During the handy pandy, it got a little, it got a little rough there for me. I was working on oncology at the time and I lost a lot of patients. I did. And I cried a lot. And I questioned a lot of things. But you know, it it really humanizes me humanized me a lot um becoming a registered nurse it was a it was a rough go during nursing school i thought i was going to lose my mind but for those of you who are there i want to encourage you to keep going it is the glam comes the the things come the finances come all of it comes it may be a little hard to find a man <clears throat> working long hours but nursing is the best thing that i've ever done and i want to encourage those of you who are in nursing school to stick to it Get you a good study partner. Review, 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 review. You may not have done great on that last test, but it's not over with. You know, redemption is real. You can always come back. If those of you who are preparing for the NCLEX, I'm praying your strength. It's not as hard as they think, make you think that it is. It's, it's difficult, but it's not as hard as they, I'm tr trust me. You got this. I believe in you. And if you made it here, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And there was some satire, of course, involved in this video, but it, it is true. The points that I hit on, I do feel like are very real. And I do want to encourage those of you who are, who are nurses and who are still in the field and who have been nurses longer than me. You know, you guys know, we have to reach back and help people and encourage them because there, the gap is, is, is widening. Yes, a lot of people are becoming nurses, but a lot of people also quit nursing after and during the pandemic. So I want to encourage a lot of um, people to come into the field of nursing. Even if this is your second career, there's room for you. Um, but come into it with compassion. Become a nurse because you care about people and you want to be a, a change agent. You wanna be a difference maker. And um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on TikTok at the Dope Life of T. And, of, and or officially Trinity. You can find me one of the two ways. Um, yeah. See you guys in the next video.